Hi, I'm Professor Surabhi Daya and I head the journalism department at the Indian Institute of Mass Communication.
As all of us know, 2020 was a challenging year for all of us. Fighting COVID, we had all learned to live differently. We were, uh, you know, busy boosting our immunity, wearing a mask, maintaining a distance of six feet, sanitizing our hands and fighting COVID. And when the going got tough, it was really important to stay positive. So you all are media students and you must know everything about the media industry in India and how it functions. Even during the COVID times, um, the lockdown, uh, you know, and the other uh, uh, problems that the journalists faced, the Indian media and entertainment industry kept providing news and information to all the viewers without letting fear affect them in any manner. So from that perspective today, I will discuss about the media industry in India and just update you the impact of COVID on the different segments of Indian media and entertainment industry. Friends, we have many media reports coming daily, but uh, today let us analyze the media and uh, industry size and the trends as per the FIKI EY report of 2020 playing by the new rules and analyze the ongoing trends in the media industry. I will discuss the size of the different segments and the changes rather the big shift that the industry has gone through. Every segment of media and industry, whether it is TV or radio, print, digital, etc., has actually redefined itself. Experts say that several digital trends accelerated their trajectory, fed by growth in broadband, personal devices, and smartphone televisions. 2020 saw demand patterns shifts as consumers actively sought alternatives, and they had all the time during the COVID and the lockdown to try new things. So digital media adoption accelerated as it was aided and supported by the growth of digital infrastructure. Consequently, the consumption patterns also shifted and increased across online news, gaming and entertainment sectors. As the new demand side patterns emerged, so the media and entertainment businesses, they had to accelerate some of the changes that they had started to relook at their customers and the engagement models. Today, content creation and storytelling are very diverse and they come from all parts of the country as experts say. But business models are changing majorly from B to C to D to C, that's direct to consumers. Basically, new distri distribution models and monetization strategies are also evolving across both large and small screens. So the supply side transformed as you know, the media and entertainment companies, they took the opportunity to reinvent themselves. Appointment viewing on television news, uh, gamification on e-commerce apps, circulation transformation in print companies, short videos on OTT platforms, whether it is Netflix or uh, you know, hot star, interactivity and brand solutions from radio sector. They were some of the many, you know, strategic shifts that were seen in 2020. This era will be defined by a segment agnostic media landscape, which focuses on direct to consumer, that's D 2 C products and differentiated techniques for acquiring, retaining and, you know, transacting the D 2 C relationship. So the traditional media companies are compelled by this segment agnostic media landscape to redefine themselves according to the evolving demands of the consumers. For example, in efforts to build end consumer platforms, traditional broadcasters are modifying themselves as content producers in the new media platforms and they are playing their bids on it. So newspaper companies have also acquired new strategies to create content in audio and video formats and serve the needs of their communities through transactions and classifieds. D2C platforms have been launched by the content production houses and telecos. So D2C has emerged as the latest parameter to decide a media brand's worth and standing in the market. These changes are driving a shift in monetization of content investments. The Indian media and entertainment sector 
um, according to the FICI report fell by 24 percent to INR 1.38 trillion which is equal to US dollars 18.9 billion in effect taking the revenues back to 2017 levels and this fall is around INR 439 billions. The last quarter of 2020 showed a marked improvement in revenues for most segments and it is expected that you know m &E sector will recover around 25% in 2021 and will reach around 1.73 trillion. And then it will also grow at a CAGR of 13.7 uh, you know billion by 2023. While the television segment remained the largest segment, digital media overtook the print and online gaming overtook the filmed entertainment segment which was really disrupted in 2020. So let us analyze the INR 439 billion fall in the media and entertainment industry. Digital and online gaming were the only two segments which grew in the last year during COVID and it added an aggregate of INR 26 billion and consequently their contribution to media and entertainment sector increased from around 16% in 2019 to around 23% in 2020. Other segments as I just said uh, you know fell by an aggregate of INR 465 billion. The largest absolute contributors to the fall were filmed entertainment segment around 119 billion, the print sector 106 billion, television sector 102 billion. The share of the traditional media, television or print or film entertainment or OOH or radio or music for that matter, it stood at around 72 percent of the m &E sector's uh, revenues in the last year regarding GDP. While the media and entertainment sector usually grows faster than GDP, it also falls more than GDP degrowth given in the discretionary nature of the advertising and this time the sector fell three times the national uh, you know India's nominal GDP fall. So in 2020 when the GDP fell by around 8 percent advertising fell around 25 percent while the sector overall fell by 24 percent. Now let us discuss a bit on you know every segment and see what has uh, you know how has COVID uh, you know affected on a particular segment. Let us have a look at the overall media scenario. So in 2020 the overall size of the media industry was 1383 billion while in 2019 it pegged at 1822 billion so there is a steep fall. Television is the largest m and &E segment and television industry declined 13 percent from INR 787 billion in 2019 to INR 685 billion in 2020. So INR 251 billion on account of highly you know discounted advertising rates during the lockdown months because the, the businesses were not flourishing. So the advertisers did not pay the same rates. The media industry did not get the same rates of advertising due to which it fell. So let us now discuss a bit on every segment and see what was the effect of COVID on a particular segment. Let us have a look at the overall media scenario. So in 2020 it was uh, a 1383 billion industry whereas in 2019 it pegged at 1822 billions. Let us start with the television as it is the largest segment. It, it declined by 13 percent from INR 787 billion to INR 685 billion in the year 2020 and INR 251 billion on account of highly discounted advertising rates during the lockdown months and COVID. So last year during the COVID uh, the advertising decrease was 30 percent year on year. The people did not have their regular businesses and they could not pay the regular advertising rates to the media industry. Hence the largest segment in India faced one of the biggest falls in advertising. Subscription declined 7 percent to INR 434 billion due to the continued growth of free television, reverse migration 
and a reduction in ARPU, that's average revenue per user, due to the part implementation of NTO 2.0. Regional channels received around 27% more ad volumes than the national channels in 2020. Major sports leagues got postponed, but IPL provided a much needed revival push in the sports viewership. Smart TV sets crossed the 5 million mark and grew their base by around a million homes. With people spending more time indoors, the overall time spent watching television increased by 9% over 2019. The television channel reach also increased during this period. And uh, you see there was an increase in the number of uh, news and non-news channels overall. Television segment revenues they are expected to grow at a CAGR of 7 percent to reach INR 847 billion in the next 2-3 years. Driven by the increased base of subscribers as households continued to get televised. So, growth will be driven by connected TVs which could cross 40 million homes by 2025 and free television could cross 50 million homes by then, thereby making core television a more massified product. The smart television will usher in an era of connected viewing which will enable viewers to interact with each other as well as the broadcaster through the content. The importance of regional and sports programming will also increase. It will drive up both ad rates as well as end consumer package pricing subject to the regulatory actions. So, this was about the television segment. Now, let us discuss about the digital segment, the digital media which has made its place replacing the print media. Earlier, the print media was at number 2 and uh, now, the digital media due to the coronavirus has picked up pace and has come to the number 2 position. So, as per the FIKI and EY report to, to 2020, uh, digital media grew by 6.5 percent to reach INR 235 billion and it is expected to grow at 22 percent CAGR to reach around 425 billion by 2023. So, digital subscription grew 49 percent in 2020 to reach INR 43.5 billion as per the report and as the pandemic uh, you know and the consequent lockdown reduced fresh content on television, online sports went behind a paywall. IPL went behind a paywall and the pandemic forced much of the population for longer periods indoors. Subscription revenues, if you talk about subscription revenues which was around 3.3 percent of the segment in 2017 had increased to 19 percent by 2020. Paid OTT subscriptions crossed 50 million for the first time in 2020. This is also courtesy COVID and the lockdown because people you know you, you see your kids, you see your siblings, they are all subscribing to paid OTT platforms and a parallel screen. So, digital advertising stayed almost stable due to the increased allocation of ad spends by advertisers who accelerated their investments in digital sales channels. SME advertisers continued to increase their spends on digital advertising and experimented more with online e-commerce platforms. Internet penetration if you talk about uh, in India, it increased 11 percent and it reached around 795 million of which 747 million had broadband access. 45 percent of India's population over the last 15 years of age um, had you know access to a smartphone. So, Indians spent 4.6 hours a day on their phones 
increased data consumption by around 15 percent over 2019 and aggregated 450 million online entertainment consumers in India. Advertising remained flat in 2020 despite a fall in the April to June quarter as several categories increased their spends on the digital medium as they expanded online sales channels subsequently. E-commerce advertising also achieved scale and it reached around 35 billion. So the digital advertising value does not include the spends of many small and medium enterprises, but they are, they are also estimated to be in the range of 90 billion by the FICI. Digital advertising uh, it is expected to outpace all other ad media by another uh, 4 years. So, the metrics that matter will change from monthly active users to daily active users, from audience numbers to engagement, loyalty and time spent leading to platforms focusing on segmented audiences and community ownership. So, newspaper digital products will increasingly go behind the paywalls and it is expected to generate subscription revenues of INR 4 billion in another 2 years. It is estimated that demand for original content will also double by 2023 and uh, the number of viewing hours will go up. The share of regional language consumption on OTT pat platforms will also cross 50 percent. Now, if we talk about you know growth in digital subscription revenues, it is so much that you can see it in your homes. Growth has led largely by Disney, by Hotstar which put the IPL I said behind a paywall. It increased content investments by Netflix and Amazon Prime Video and launch of several regional language products. In addition, 284 million Indians consumed content which became bundled with their data plans. So, we will talk about the bundled digital consumers uh, later in my presentation. So, this was about the digital media growth in India and since it replaced the print, I would like to talk about the print media first. So, according to the report that we are just discussing and the facts and figures that we have taken from the report, it shows the print media shows a degrowth of 36 percent in 2020 due to the impact of COVID-19. So, during COVID, print industry in India suffered a loss of over 4500 crores. Print's revenue declines were led by 41 percent fall in advertising and a 24 percent fall in circulation revenues. English language and metro newspapers were hit harder and they struggled to get back their circulation post the pandemic while regional language newspapers recovered a larger portion of their lost circulation. Print media industries or organizations implemented significant cost reduction measures to achieve between 25 percent and 40 percent efficiencies, a significant portion of which can continue in the years ahead. Many print media organizations started conducting digital versions of their popular IPs and entered the high volume but lower value digital event businesses. Advertising revenues fell by 41 percent in 2020, but it is expected to grow to 25 percent in 2021 by the end of 2021 and it can reach around 152.1 billion, but we will get the exact figures when we get the 2021 report. So, subscription revenues fared better and you know uh, better than the advertising revenues falling 24 percent through metro and English language newspapers they witnessed a more pronounced. So, it is expected that subscription revenues will grow 25 percent and exceed 2019 levels by 2023. So, magazine revenues halved in 2020 and with live events revenues most non-existent for three quarters of the year, the print segment graduated to high volumes but lower value online events as I just uh, said. 
the future will be driven by increasingly uh, you know by increasing the utility of the publication and emphasizing that credible news comes with a cost and growing subscription revenues through micro market segmenting and bundling developing sector specific advertising solutions as well. So, during the current situation the latest reports after the outbreak of pandemic suggest that the print industry is headed for a further downfall after it marked degrowth. Though it is true that print as an institution is so deeply entrenched as a means of information dissemination in a country like India, where the majority population is traditional that it would not be able to disappear anytime soon, one needs to view the situation very practically. But in India, we see that print is at the doorsteps. You know, all of us may be uh, stopped subscribing to the print uh, newspapers during the COVID times due to which it suffered a loss of 4500 crores. But gradually people who are loyal to the print industry and those who are habitual of reading the newspapers, they have revived and uh, re-subscribed to the newspapers. So, the Indian Newspaper Society INS which represents almost 800 newspapers in India mentioned in a dispatch to the government about the ongoing losses in the print industry it pegged at 4500 crores. So, it included a plea for coming up with a stimulus package in the face of collapsing advertising and finance without which the print industry could fall uh, and you know face losses of up to 12,000 to 15,000 crores. So, a relief package uh, would in this case be necessary uh, whereas, you know uh, many livelihoods are at stake. So, during that time I remember Silesh Gupta who was the president of INS said newspapers are facing the most turbulent and difficult period at of all the times. This industry directly and indirectly gives employment to 3 million people. And however, against all the odds and in spite of the increasing costs with no returns at all, all necessary steps are taken to ensure that the newspaper reaches every morning to its readers in every nook and corner of the country regularly. So, the media boy also asked the uh, you know the media body also asked the central and the state governments uh, public sector undertakings and the Bureau of Outreach and Communication to take immediate action and release the outstanding dues uh, so that the print industry can be brought back on the track. INS also requested the center to remove the 5 percent import duty on newsprint as well as a 2 year tax holiday. So, it also mentioned that this would not have any adverse consequences on domestic manufacturers or any make in India efforts. INS also extended its concerns to the government regarding media ads and enclosed a request which emphasized on the importance of print ads by government and PSUs in the survival of the industry. I remember reading that INS wrote uh, that it is a very small amount as far as government spending is concerned, but it is a huge amount for the newspaper industry which is essential for any vibrant democracy and is struggling to survive. So, print is the only industry which has a wage board and the government decides how much the employees should be paid. So, this being the only industry where market forces do not uh, decide the salaries, the government has a responsibility towards the industry. Though in Indian scenario, uh, we do not actually stick to these uh, you know uh, wage boards and uh, media organizations are, de are the deciding factors sometimes. It is looking at a 200 percent increase in the budget spend for print media, which can be one of the last saving graces of the print medium. So, transformation in the print segment is expected to be in the areas of product realignment, revenue transformation, cost intelligence and digital demarcation. 
print will need to focus on growing reach in its existing markets through a combination of identifying new micro markets which are you know uh, uh, forging uh, you know bundled deals with direct to consumer aggregators like television or OTT platforms or e-commerce platforms. Significantly more industry level shared services initiatives are expected to ensure the cost efficiencies. Publishers can also implement process automation for productivity improvement across key business processes. The focus will remain on strengthening the print segments core capabilities to building communities, but with a wider scope of offerings to them apart from just the news. The report tells us that online gaming was the fastest growing m and &E segment in 2020. The online gaming segment grew at 18% in 2020 to reach around 77 billion aided by work from home, school from home, increased trial of online multiplayer games during the lockdown. Online gamers grew at 20 percent from 300 million in 2019 to 360 million in 2020 and the transaction based game revenues grew 21 percent on the back of fantasy sports and others uh, you know casual gaming uh, maybe rummy or poker and the revenues grew 8 percent led by in app purchases. Transaction based game revenues grew 21 percent, but the casual gaming revenues grew at 7 percent. So, growth has witnessed across the paradigm from hyper local casual gaming to esports. Regulatory uncertainty needs to be resolved through policy clarity for the segment to achieve its potential and the future growth will be driven by IOT gaming, uh, smart sports clothing health gaming, gamification of traditional media, 5G led innovations across the cloud gaming, cross platform gaming, e-commerce gamification, augmented reality, virtual reality games. So, the segment is expected to reach around INR 155 billion by 2023 at a CAGR of 27 percent to become the third largest segment of the Indian entertainment and media sector. And gaming is going to be all pervasive and it will proliferate our lives. So, the segment will grow across all the verticals, esports, fantasy sports, casual gaming and other games of skill because in our country the luck based gaming is not allowed digitally. But revenue growth will be led by uh, mobile based real money gaming applications across these verticals. So, a nodal agency is required to bring clarity in regulations as well as implement the responsible gaming guidelines and monitor areas like minor gameplay, security, data protection, content guidelines and training. For gaming, Phi Digital and Digical models will emerge in the times to come. Game led events and merchandising can help gaming uh, companies to seize the opportunity to increase the physical monetization from their audience base on the digital platform. With the growth witnessed in gamers, they will convert the new game developers which will enable them to play within their communities. So, new technology like AI characters, cloud gaming, cloud computing and data science will increase player engagement and retention as well. Regional gaming will also provide a large opportunity. Globally, legal sports gambling uh, have gone mainstream, cloud gaming has already taken off, cross platform gaming has become mainstream and there is a significant use of data analysis, analytics. So, these are the facts and figures from the FIKI report about the four major sectors that are doing uh, you know well. Let us now come to films. While theatrical 
revenues plummeted to less than a quarter of their 2019 levels, a portion of this loss was made up through higher digital rights revenues which almost doubled during 2020 to INR 35 billion. However, the stoppage in production for over 6 months had its impact which will now only recover uh, you know once a healthy slate of films is made ready for the release and the fear of stepping into crowded places subsides. While the trend for direct to digital releases will continue, producers realized that the importance of theatrical releases for large scale film productions is also very very important. Next segment is animation and VFX. So, what happened was that the stoppage of television and films content production for several months in 2020 resulted in a fall in revenues while VFX and post production contracted 62 percent due to this. So, inability to conduct live shoots led to increased demand for animated content and consequently animation registered a growth of 10 percent. Live events were the hardest hit of all the segments and the segment witnessed numerous attempts to digitize its offerings, but could not recover a small fraction of revenues through that medium. The segment will continue to remain impacted till the time audiences feel comfortable about participating in live events. And what about OOH? The segment lost, you know, lost out due to reduced travel, we did not travel at all and less time spent out of the home on account of the lockdown and COVID. So, largest hits were, you know, were witnessed by premium transit properties where passenger volumes plummeted and digital OOH reached 5 percent of total segment revenues. Another segment that we are talking here about is radio. So, the radio revenues which had fallen 7.5 percent in 2019 fell by 54 percent in 2020 to INR 14.3 billion on account of both you know ad rates and volume drops as key advertiser segments were unable to you know run their businesses as I just discussed. So, ad volumes also fell by 27 percent and skewed towards you know non metros while rates fell over 37 percent on an average. So, the live event revenues also fell down due to the pandemic radio companies increased their focus on creating online IPs and content production. So, the revenue fall was highest in uh, you know around April to June that was around 81 percent, but it the revenues recovered to around 54 percent uh, you know of 219 2019 levels by October December quarter and it is expected that it will you know recover to 23.3 billion in 2021. Last but not least is music. The digitization of music continued in 2020 with audio streaming revenues growing 15 percent, but overall music segment re revenues were flat as performance rights fell by over 65 percent. So, if you see overall the subscription fared better than advertising, advertising reduced INR 199 billion in 2020 and it registered a fall of 25 percent, while digital advertising remained flat and the highest falls were noted in print and television and ad, you know advertising. So, overall subscription degrew uh, to 154 billions or 20 percent with the highest fall being seen in domestic and international theatricals of over 100 billion. The pandemic showed the resilience of subscription models versus ad based models across the o OTT and print and television and you know as subscription increased from 49.7 percent in 2019 to 51.5 percent of the total revenues in 2020. Friends, the m and &E sector has gone medium agnostic. So, given that the video, audio, text and experiences are available across almost all the segments, the m and &E sector is redefining itself across 4 verticals, video that is TV or video OTT, 
experiential that is online gaming, cinemas, events, OOH, textual which is print, online news, audio which is radio, music, audio, OTT. So, content has become a formal and with media companies finding ways to produce content that is engaging yet transient to adhere to people's reduced attention spans. Consumer has also emerged as the new creator through streaming video platforms such as YouTube and other platforms like we had TikTok earlier. So, in distribution partnerships and collaborations are becoming necessary since D 2 C relationships need uh, you know creative ideas and skills to provide the service to consumers and consume the content. In this age partnerships between telecos, content producers, devices and pay wallets will fulfill the required skills. So, if we analyze you know uh, the, all the media facts that we just you know discussed this will impact greatly the reach and depth of data and the trade off between depth and revenue of data is being seen as difficult balance, but media companies need to develop on this balance between scale and value creation. So, you know the consumption, the monetization uh, in terms of uh, consumption and monetization the media organizations will have to learn the art of individual consumption along with even if they are in a habit of mass consumption. The artificial intelligence technology is aided you know it is aiding them to enable images and figuring the consumption patterns faster tagging and curation of content is also made possible by machine learning, robotics, blockchain, bots. It can make process of dispatching orders efficiently. So, the monetization model for any media company in this day and age can be enabled by a set of tools like um, you know acquisition, advertising, subscription, transaction, retention. So, the available tools can be used as instrument in integrating to monetize the consumer relationship. And going forward the media companies in India will regularly come face to face with what should grab their attention first in the horizontal world. The most important issues of these companies will be strategies to attract new consumers and engage them, technologies to acquire, models of revenue, how to get audience to create and curate content and tricks to manage the communities and how to undertake the process of transformation through all these processes in an active manner. So, a segment agnostic media landscape leading to D 2 C relationships will define the new era of the media sector according to Mr. Raghav Anand uh, who is one of the digital media leaders EY India. The answers to these questions in the backdrop of a segment agnostic media landscape will define the new era of media sector with the D 2 C relationships. Now, let us talk about the consumers and the types of consumers. So, today we have different types of consumers. We have digital only consumers who consume content only on the digital platforms do not access television. We have tactical digital consumers, those who consume paid TV and at least one paid OTT service. We have bundled digital consumers, those who pay consume uh, you know those who consume pay TV and generally only one telco bundled content where we get some schemes you know. So, those who consume mass consumers uh, is the next category of consumers, those who consume pay TV and occasionally they may consume some OTT content usually free. Then we have free consumers who do not pay for any content. So, these are different kinds of uh, consumers that we have today in India and uh, uh, you can see in the slide uh, you know the number of uh, uh, consumers in millions. Uh, you know as it is uh, shown. So, if you talk about mergers and acquisitions in m and &E, the sector continued you know to witness moderate deal activities 
despite all the major disruptions brought by COVID. And although the number of deals increased from 64 in 2019 to 77 in 2020, the deal value reduced to 68 billion in 2020, which was higher in 2019, which was you know 101 billion. So, this was largely due to the absence of big ticket deals, which only you know two deals crossing US dollar 100 million threshold as compared to four such deals in 2019. So, in line with the trend of past three years, new media contributed to ma majority of the deals in terms of volume and its share increased in terms of deal value from 37 uh, percent to 92 percent in 2020. Another important aspect of uh, the Indian media is the FDI, the foreign direct investment in the digital media and it it is permitted up to 26 percent through the government approval route. So, at a time where digital media is booming, the Department of Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade uh, under the Department of Commerce and Industry mandated that FDI in entities engaged in uploading, streaming of news and current affairs through digital media should be up uh, to 26 percent under the government approval route. So, if we talk about uh, the emerging technologies, you know, we have artificial intelligence, we have blockchains, we have bots, we have robotic processes, automation, we have cloud computing and uh, you know, the media and entertainment sector is embracing all the emerging technologies. Um, global trends reveal that placing more content behind the paywalls might prove to be beneficial for the digital as well as the, the print uh, companies. So, print players must also invest in new digital technologies which they are doing and platforms to create new monetization avenues for their audience and advertisers. They must also experience and experiment with AI, journalism and other technologies to enhance news production. Publishers around the world are also making use of voice technologies like Alexa and various measures of restructuring and cost cutting initiatives are rolled out amidst the declining advertising and circulation revenues. So, the global opportunity for content creation is real and will reign during the upcoming years. In India, Netflix is set to invest uh, INR 30 billion in content to buy licenses and you know create over 50 originals and um, covering across more than 20 cities to shoot. So, a major shift is in its way that will change a lot in the industry which will uh, you know the change in the large uh, uh, to small screen ratio I would say. The change will occur as the connectivity of internet to smartphone screens will double to 750 million in about 4 years. So, concluding the ratio of the large versus small screen ratio to 1 is to 3. This will lead to an increase in demand for content across the short and interactive formats, which will further drive up content prices and ensure that content libraries are shared more. So, the demand for regional digital content will rise much in the non-metro markets. According to the experts, the radio and the print companies will benefit from this change as they will be able to provide required content to meet this demand. But let us wait and see what happens. Secondly, the global OTT market continues to head north with the VOD platforms and the OTT services in India include the likes of Amazon Prime Video, Netflix, YouTube, etc. So, the subscription video on demand model continues uh, you know to contribute as the largest OTT revenue source since 2014. And the other contributing revenue models are transaction videos on demand advertising videos on demand and are growing gradually. So, the top position is retained by US as dominant OTT market by some distance with China in the second place. So, in the plethora of OTT platform competing for consumers attention, the biggest drivers and differentiators in the OTT space will be premium and 
original content. So, there is a heavy investment of time and money by the OTT players to acquire and develop new kind of content. So, to sum it up all and to analyze it all, you know media moguls do not define journalism in terms of platform. The duty and the art of profession sustains regardless of distribution strategy. The content and format of a story may vary from print to digital in the sense that longer stories are more suited to the pages of a newspaper, but the intent of the organization remains the same across all the mediums. The delivery of news and remaining relevant to the readers stand to be the main focus and the future vision of kickstarting a new upsurge of growth in the media industry is looking very bright. Owing to the technological disruptions, fresh opportunities are being created for the competing players within the sector and India is steadily heading towards a multitude of opportunities with the hope that the sector's key functionaries will innovate, restructure, transform their mass relevance to capture the newer markets and demographics with strategies that stem from sustainable business models and management perspectives. So, thank you so much.